of Crosby, and this is my response to two different TED Talk videos. One, The Magic Washing Machine by Hans Rosling, and Our Century's Greatest Injustice by Cheryl Widdum. Um, in the first one, Hans talked about when his parents got their first washing machine, and they had saved for years in order to be able to buy this. And it was a really big deal in their family, and the grandparents were over to watch them use it for the first time. And Hans talked about how his grandma had spent hours a week washing clothes by hand in Sweden. She'd have to haul the water from the stream and then collect firewood to heat it. And he explained how in a lot of developing countries, that this is how they wash their clothes. And it's something that takes a lot of hours of hard work for the women. And so women around the world, they all want washing machines. Um, but there are only about 2 billion out of the 7 billion people in the world. There are only about 2 billion that have access to washing machines. And um, Hans talked about how once their family got the washing machine, they were then able to spend that time doing other things like reading books. And um, this really kind of helped me see how in developing countries, we have more time for education, developing talents, and we have so many machines and so much technology. And so that really frees up a lot of time for us. And I kind of thought about how we can choose now how we want to spend that time, whether it is developing talents and learning and being productive, or we can waste a lot of time too, just entertaining ourselves or not accomplishing things. So that was interesting to think about because we don't have to spend so much time working to wash our clothes or make our food or anything like that. We really have a lot more time. Um, Hans also talked about how as more countries become developed that they will then have access to all these different machines and that will cause energy use to go way up in the world and creating a big energy use problem. And so the solution isn't to not allow them to develop. We can't really do that when we're using all these resources and machines, but we need to figure out how to go um, how to go green with energy. And in the second video, um, Cheryl talks about how just the experiences of a lot of different young women around the world who don't have the ability to receive an education and how they're in many places women are treated very badly, very unequal to the men. Um, and she talked about such places as China and Ethiopia and India, where women are married at a very young age and just treated poorly and have to work hard their whole lives. And there's kind of this cycle where once, um, if young women ever are able to somehow go to school through a scholarship or somehow they get money, and they go to school and they can work hard and then they get a good job and are able to earn money and bring that back to their family and provide better housing and help out their community and then eventually hire more people to work for them. And so it really just takes a little bit of money and then they can break this cycle of poverty. So. I guess that made me think about how much of a difference we really can make just with small donations. In the video, she talked a lot about how the best way to fight poverty is through education, and especially through educating women. And it was interesting to hear her talk about how men, when they are earning money, don't tend to spend it very wisely. They, she mentioned that they often in poor places, they'll spend their money on drinking and tobacco and entertainment. Um, but if the women earn money, then they use it to support their families and to educate their kids. 
And one thing I thought was interesting, she said that um, educated women tend to get married later and have fewer kids, and then they educate their kids. And I personally believe that marriage and raising kids is important, um, but I also believe in education as well. And so I guess I just think it's um, incredible that here in the United States, so many women have the opportunity to do it all, to get an education and still to have a family and to live such a high quality of life. Whereas many of these women in, in developing countries around the world just get married young and never get to be educated. Um, towards the end of the video, she was saying that there are very few things, um, or studies show there are very few things that can bring human beings greater happiness after they've already had all their material needs needs met. Once they've got their shelter and food and clothing and all of that, it's hard to actually raise happiness. But um, they found that one of those few things is reaching outside yourself to contribute to something bigger to help other people. And I think most of us here in the United States, or at least um, most of the people that I live with, that I'm surrounded with daily, we have our needs met. So it's just a good reminder of uh, the importance of trying to help others now. And I thought about how in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we have the, uh, the fast offering program where we are able to take some of our money that we've earned and contribute it to the church, who then uses it to bless people in need locally and throughout the whole world. Because um, um, as I watch these videos, I have a desire to help people because I have been given so much. And I think it's neat that Fast Offerings is a way that we can reach people all around the world. And through that, I can receive joy as well as helping other people.